Well, hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Comic Book Historians. As we mentioned in the Pulps to Comic Books chapter, the 19th century character spring Jack was a one-penny precursor to Batman, who was created in 1939. However, the similarity runs deeper than just the cover of the book, but also into the techniques in which the character would introduce fear into the superstitious hearts of his enemies. That, as well as his secret identity, servant, and general persona, showed that there are a lot of key overlapping characteristics between the two characters. Whether Bob Kane or Bill Finger read this character, or read a descendant of this character, almost doesn't matter, but rather demonstrates that this type of antihero is valuable in pulp culture and doesn't have its genesis in just comic books. spring Jack started in the year 1837 as an English boogeyman, a ghost, or a devil. He made appearances in local written culture at the time with some pics like this one in 1867. As appearances became more widespread, he would become described as wearing a skin coat with a horned mask, and would eventually be depicted again in British Penny Dreadfuls like this one from 1886. There were several appearances and backstories explained in various forms of literature, and one analyzed a little more closely here would be the One Penny Magazine serial Spring Heel Jack written by Alfred Barrage. We can examine the first issue of this multi-part saga since copies are available online to buy, and we can see which paragraphs are key descriptors that not only describe Barrage's spring heel jack, but can also be used to describe Batman, either in actual objective verbiage or simply by perception of how a criminal would view Batman in a dark alleyway in his early issues. First thing to understand is that similar to Kane and Finger's Batman 1939, this series of spring Hill Jack is a revenge saga, and the anti-hero gets payback against criminals of the story. Also similar to Batman, to seek the best form of revenge and to engage in psychological power over the enemy, spring Hill Jack would use superstition against the people he was after. When spring Hill Jack is sighted in the darkness and in costume, he is described by criminals as a terror with human form, agility of an ape, and bat-like wings part man and part beast. In the early issues of Detective Comics, Batman was seen in costume by the cowardly and superstitious criminals in the dark and he would immediately invoke a feeling of dread and fear. As there are more spring Heel Jack sightings in the story, his mystique and tendency to camouflage into his nighttime surroundings give spectators a sense that he has the power of flying with phrases like, he seemed to be gifted with the power of flying, for no sooner did his feet touch the earth than he rose in the air. Batman is capable of such athletic feats in the early issues of Detective Comics and with his costume would be seen as leaping in and out of rooms. As his physical prowess both impressed and frightened his victims, spring Jack's horrified spectators would see various aspects of this anti-hero, for example his brightly glaring eyes and a grinning mouth as he would threaten them with death, and he held no qualms about killing the guilty. This was the same for Batman in the early Detective Comics where people were so scared they would end up dead either by direct force or by self-inflicted wounds like this fall into a tank of acid. And Batman reveled in those deaths as all criminals deserve to pay. As the sightings continue, superstitious rumors start to generate about spring Hill Jack's capabilities saying that he possesses wonderful powers, and that he is not mortal and can clear an obstacle 12 feet in height. Similar to Batman, he uses fear so that people feel he is better than he actually is, and instead of just ganging up on him, they were too busy confused and running as Batman would make his leaped attacks. As we read the series, we find out that Barrage's spring Heel Jack is named Bertram Raiden, a young heir to the fortune of the Raiden family, and he sets out to avenge his wrongful conviction against his evil half-brother, Hubert Sedgefield. Similar to the Batman, we find out that the secret dual identity of young heir Bruce Wayne, with the same initials as Bertram Raiden, well into the story. For both characters, this is also not revealed immediately, but rather a delayed point in the storyline. Bertram Raiden does use the power of illusion, whether he is costumed or not, disappears from sight and leaves neither sign nor trace behind him. Batman does the same thing even in the early issues of Detective Comics, where a person will turn their head for a moment and he has immediately disappeared. One spring Jack sighting has him disappear in a puff of smoke, 
which combined with his costume sets up the illusion of teleportation. This is really the same as how Batman disappears from a crime scene or away from a passing spectator with a puff of smoke or gas to escape and leave them confused with how he got away. Springheel Jack does leap out of the darkness scaring criminals that couldn't see him coming as they repeatedly try to shoot him with guns which miss with no effect. Batman does the same as he jumps from the shadows, scaring his prey and punches them out despite their shots, mostly due to them not shooting their intended target out of fear. Here's a paragraph when spring Jack would stare his prey in the eyes as they dropped to their knees and he would scream his name as the Avenger of Wrong and prepare them to die. Batman is explained as the Avenger of Evil in his origin story from Detective Comics 33, 1939 as he stares at the city waiting for his next criminal target to terrorize and indulge in some late night vengeance. spring Jack's alter ego, Bertram Raiden or BW, has a faithful servant who wants to see Bertram Raiden restored into his inheritance and again in charge of Raiden Manor as they speak from their secret headquarters which is a graveyard crypt. This manservant is like Alfred who was introduced in his first appearance in Batman 16, 1943 as a faithful servant of B.W., Bruce Wayne, who would help his master achieve his mission as his dual secret identity through whatever task was needed. Now similar to another Batman precursor, Zorro, played by Douglas Fairbanks in 1920 who had a strong influence on Finger and Kane would put his mark on various places and people with the letter Z to mark his territory as well as his legacy of dominance and fear in the criminal underworld. Well, spring Hill Jack would do the same thing as he would violently place the letter S on various places and people, like this paragraph mentioning his mark set upon a person's brow. They describe the mark as the letter S to remind them of spring Hill Jack. One villain that was caught in his crosshairs did also try to shoot spring Hill Jack with his pistol, but before he could use it, the room became filled with flame and smoke, then a darkness and a silence. Batman would use smoke or gas to distract his enemies and facilitate his inability to get hit by bullets or enemies' fists. Again, another spring Hill Jack sighting has him appearing six feet high, a weird figure, black, gruesome, spreading a pair of wings from its shoulders. Whether it was the bat gyro or his costume, criminals and spectators would see Batman from far away and truly believe they were witnessing an animal like a bat or a mystical, vengeful creature of the night, much to his own entertainment. Barrage of spring Hill Jack wasn't the first secret identity costume hero, but he arguably was the first with a secret headquarters, a butler servant, and a mission of vengeance. If we consider his ability to induce fear and illusion as an actual super ability, then we can add that qualifier as well. Unfortunately, Barrage couldn't finish the story with Bertram Raiden getting his final revenge on his half-brother, but enough of it was made in this serial where we know where it was going. Anytime we see Batman, maybe we can remember spring Heel Jack and the version of the character written by Alfred Barrage. We got more to say in other videos. Also check out our podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Google Play. We also have constant updates on Twitter and Instagram or continue the conversation in our Facebook group. Cheers.